235 crores, both in BFL and BHFL. Uh, the liquidity buffer, given strong treasury market, uh, uh, we managed to raise reasonable amount of long-term money. Uh, in Q1, cost of funds was 7.94. It was an increase of eight basis points on a sequential basis uh, in the quarter. Uh, we expect that cost of funds should principally peak by August or so, or July August, September is the uh, last leg of uh, increase in terms of cost of funds that should happen. And from there on, uh, uh, cost, cost of funds should start to go sideways. And hopefully as rate cycle, rate cut cycle comes in, uh, uh, we should see uh, numbers go down in terms of cost of funds. Deposit book grew by 26% and stood at just a tad below 63,000 crores. And net growth in the quarter was 2,600 crores. Uh, deposits accounted for 21%, 20% of consolidated borrowing. Uh, NIM grew 25%. Uh, NIM compression was, despite the fact that NIM compressed by 23 basis points, uh, 13 basis points was on account of cost of funds, and 10 basis point movement was due to uh, uh, AM composition. Uh, OPEX to net total income came in in line, came in at 33.2% against 34% uh, in uh, Q4 last year. Employee headcount stood at 55,000 and uh, annualized addition was 16.8%. Credit cost, that was the, uh, that was not, uh, it's not a great quarter from that standpoint. Uh, gross loan losses and provisions were 1790 crores. Uh, gross loan loss to average AU was 2.12%. Net was 1.99 percent, which is in point number 17. Uh, we had managed we we uh, um, consumed management overlay of 105 crores, yeah. uh, of 105 crores in the quarter, and that's a differential between 2.12 percent and 1.99 percent. Uh, net loan loss to average AUS uh, for the year uh, we projected to be between 1.75 and 1.85 percent, and we expect improvement in H2 of the current year. Uh, uh, at this juncture, however, I would say for FI25, we have marginal upward bias on this metric. GNP and NNPA came in line, came in at 86 basis points and 38 basis points, uh, as against 87 basis points and uh, um, uh, 31 basis points. Uh, principally, uh, as we as we look at the uh, loan losses and provision performance, in our assessment is principally contributed by muted collection efficiencies. When we look at the default rates across portfolios, uh, they are lower than March uh, or on a year on year basis. Uh, however, collection efficiencies were muted across portfolios actually uh, in the quarter that went by. And as a result, stage two assets uh, went up by 865 crores in Q4. Uh, we clearly uh, augmenting our, we had, uh, because even in 2019 when elections happened, if you go back to our results, the, the fourth quarter, the first quarter when 2019 elections happened, there is so much of disruption and dislocation that happens that even in that quarter you would see that the loan losses end up from 400 crores to 551 crores. So we expected it won't happen, but uh, um, uh, clearly expectation was not uh, sufficient. So, so, but we've, we've experienced this in the past in 19, uh, um, and uh, uh, it's happened uh, again. In fact, uh, uh, so so that's that's just a point to make. Move. Uh, consolidated pre-provisioning profit grew by 25%. Uh, profit before tax grew by 16% to 5,265 crores, and consolidated PAD grew by 14% on account of one-time reversal of deferred tax liability of 73 crores. Annualized ROA came in at 4.63%. Uh, ROE came in at 19.86 stroke 19.9% and capital adequacy came in at 21.65. Uh, lastly, point number 27, that uh, Bajaj Housing Finance, which is 100% subsidiary, has filed DRHP on 8th of June with SEBI and stock exchanges for potential IPO of equity shares in Abhi, and we are awaiting clearance uh, and based on market conditions, who we'll take a view. Uh, for BHFL, quickly now, uh, from consolidated results, point number 28 for BHFL, it is a good quarter. AUM was at 31% to 97,000 crores. Uh, home loan grew by 25%. Loan against property grew 21. LRD grew 41. Developer finance 75. Uh, portfolio composition remained largely steady on a year-on-year -year basis between 58, 10, 20, 11, and 2. 
the NIM grew by 10%. Uh, OPEX United Rohingya improved from 24% to 21%. Uh, GNP and NPS stood at 28 basis points and 11 basis points. And profit before tax grew by 20%. And as a result of the deferred tax liability point that I made for consolidated, uh, profit after tax grew by 5% to 483 crores. Uh, annualized ROE came in at 2.35%, and annualized ROE came in at 14.32%. Capital adequacy remains strong at 24%. Uh, as you're aware, BFL infused 2,000 crores of uh, capital in, in April uh, as, as, as rights issue uh, uh, in BHFL. On BFSL, uh, the margin trade financing AUM was up to 65%. To 4,400 crores, uh, profit after tax grew by 500%. Base is very small, uh, to 30 odd crores, um, and uh, we we think on a full year basis the firm could make 140 to 160 crores of tax uh, as we traverse the balance of the year. Uh, very quickly to panel number 12, uh, some of the omni-channel metrics, net installs are now up year on year 41%. Total traffic on web is up 23%. Um, personal loan disbursed in the quarter of 4,500 crores through the Omniprint strategy. Uh, uh, in terms of customer franchise, uh, AUM per cross sell franchise stood at 64,235,000 uh, per AUM cross sell franchise. That per cross sell franchise came in at 709 rupees. It is, uh, it is down, of course, as you can see, from 776 to 709 because last year ROA was 5.4%, uh, uh, which was a historic high. Uh, our long-term guidance is for an ROA of 4.5 to 4.7%, and that's why you saw the uh, last year number look this way. Uh, I'm jumping straight to panel 47, uh, which is consolidated AUM. Uh, mostly on a year-on-year -year basis in line, two billion three wheeler finance in line, uh, urban sales finance uh, down because e-com, uh, whose balance sheet had run down, uh, is sitting as part of that. Otherwise, 8.3% would have been, 7.6% uh, uh, would have been 8%. Uh, uh, but e-com businesses uh, and the travel businesses restarted again, so that balance sheet should build out over the next four or five months. Uh, urban B2C flat, Rural sales finance flat. So portfolio mix largely remain uh, uh, flat except for car loans. We launched new car finance last year. So that number was 1.3%. It's up at 2.5%. And uh, rest of the numbers are remaining. Uh, sideways mortgage is 30.6%. It's at 30.9%. In, uh, in terms of provisioning coverage, uh, uh, gross NPA a year ago. As you can see, there is movement across lines, but absolute numbers. So you can see movement across lines to that extent. But if you take urban sales finance, uh, the number uh, movement is for 31 crores. Uh, so, uh, but you can see that it's not portfolio determined. It is muted collection efficiency determined. And that's why you're seeing uh, uh, some level of worsening marginal or otherwise uh, across the board. Uh, in the quarter that went by. As a result, uh, GNP is looking higher uh, on a sequence, sequential basis. Overall graph aggregate GNP is, is sideways, and NPA is also sideways, but on a year-on-year -year basis, you see number having moved from 87 to 86 and 31 to 38. Provisioning coverage to at 56%. From last quarter to at 57%, is this marginally down to 56%. Uh, this is on panel 51 is the consolidated uh, provisioning coverage. As I said, it's 57 uh, and 56, so uh, it's mainly as a result of overlay release. That's the principal uh, differential. Yeah. On portfolio quality, uh, so clearly uh, under index methodology, you land up uh, accounting for loan losses ahead rather than later. So you may see these numbers are green here, then how come loan losses and provisions are um, um, are higher, mainly contributed by uh, the INDAS and ECL, that you end up eating uh, loan losses uh, much early on. Otherwise, as you see the portfolio quality, they, if you see consumer durable 99.3 to 99.45, if you look at uh, urban B2C 98.45 to 98.33, there is a 12, 13 basis point differential in statue assets, 
and so on and so forth. So you will find that most of the portfolio metrics uh, are looking green, but the loan losses for the quarter are looking elevated, uh, uh, and there is marginal difference everywhere. Other than two wheeler and three wheeler, uh, which is seen uh, movement, but uh, the reason is is green is because sequentially, if you if you see February 20, this number used to be at 11 odd percent. It's it's at five or percent, uh, and again due to mutual collection efficiency, otherwise the default rates in the portfolio, uh, a bounce rates are still at March levels. Yeah. Oh. Uh, the and I'm in panel 55, you can see rural B2C because the portfolio is not growing. Uh, you know, you're, uh, even in quarter one, it grew by 5%. It grew by 5%. Uh, so on a full year basis, you forecast this portfolio probably will grow by 10, 11% uh, on a year on year basis. Uh, we're beginning to see that how the good year and the bad year can start to also make a difference because for the last one year, the other 15 months, this portfolio has actually been uh, uh, growing at uh, at five six percent. That's really all for me to communicate in the quarter. Happy to take questions. Thank you. We will now begin the question and answer session. If you would like to ask a question, please press the star followed by one on your telephone keypad. If you change your mind, please press star followed by two. When preparing to ask your question, please ensure your phone is unmuted locally. Please limit yourself to the maximum of two questions so we can accommodate as many as possible. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Our first question comes from Chintan Joshi with Autonomous. Your line is open, please go ahead. Hi, uh, thank you. Um, can I ask one on uh, your your NIMS and uh, one uh, on asset quality? Uh, on NIMS, uh, you know, you, you highlight uh, 10 basis point NIM compression this quarter coming from a UN composition. This follows about 20 basis points from the last quarter. How should we think about kind of NIM progression? Because your UN composition trends appear to be clear. And uh, following that, uh, uh, you know, if I kind of think about it on a longer term view, three to five year view, should we kind of continue to expect somewhat NIM compression from this uh, mix shift over time? Uh, that's on NIMs, and uh, I have yeah. one more. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, Chintan, sorry. Uh, uh, the, the other one is uh, uh, just on asset quality. Uh, uh, you've given uh, uh, you know decent comments on on collection efficiency. Uh, uh, should we take away that underlying you don't see any any problems at all? This is purely an election related issue, or uh, is there more to read? Especially you know things like you've highlighted two wheeler, three wheeler, uh, you know those those areas uh, uh, where there is a bit of elevation. Is that purely election related? Thank you. No, uh, fair question. So uh, so Chintan, my by October quarter onwards, you should see stabilization of names. I think that's point number one I'm going to make. That's really how we are uh, uh, modeling the portfolio uh, model. Uh, so you will see one more quarter of movement as a result of name compression. But from there on, the the portfolio mix should largely hold. Uh, in terms of portfolio quality, look, we are in a risk business. While I could argue with you that it's a transient frame, as a firm, we are a risk-first business. Uh, we remain watchful across portfolios. Based on the data, we've already started to proactively prune segments. Uh, we've started to uh, cut exposures. So, you know, if it turns out to be transient, great. If it doesn't, uh, we would have at least acted ahead. So that's so on that's NIM. We should not on NIM. We should not expect uh, like a you know a medium term uh, compression because of the mix shift becoming more okay. You don't okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, the the scale builders and as we call profit builders and scale builders, uh, we we remain committed to anchor them uh, uh, at at the level. I mean, if I just I, look I, at the last five years of scale builders versus profit maximizers, there is a differential in the five-year CAGR. Uh, that would uh, kind of indicate that, that that kind of differential may continue over the next five. 
Uh, that's why I'm asking that that question. No, no, it's a very fair question. It's a very fair question, and the response is uh, stabilization from Iran. Okay, thank you. From September one. Sorry. Our next question comes from Piran Engineer from CLSA. Your line is open. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, hi, Dean. Congrats on the quarter, and thanks for taking my question. Uh, just again on on asset quality, really. Firstly, if you can just uh, quantify what is the impact on credit costs from the write-off policy change you had last year. So that's one. Uh, and secondly, it really gives us the confidence of improvement in uh, in the second half of the year in in credit costs. And why hasn't urban B two C been as impacted as rural B two C? Uh, there's been no change in our right of policy in the last one year, Piran. Um, uh, um, so I think that's 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 a first. I thought was, you were uh, accelerating it, right? Uh, you were no, no, that was writing it off early. Last two years we had no change in right of policy. Uh, correct my understanding. That's correct. Uh, so pre-COVID, we used to have a differential right of policy wherein I would hold the asset for a much longer period of time. Um, post COVID, I think from 2021-22, we have revised the policy. We write off quickly now. In the last one year, there has been no change in the right of policy. Okay, okay. And as I said, Piran, uh, given that you've seen some level of worsening across the board, uh, we are we are proactively pruning segments, and uh, we remain watchful. We are cutting exposures as well. Uh, so, uh, you know. Uh, uh, so far, uh, we've not seen worsening in urban B2C, but uh, we're watching. We're watching external data, we're watching internal data carefully. Okay, okay. And just and we regarding the... Between, in, between, between risk and growth, if you have to choose, we'll choose risk. Because longer term is more important than the shorter term. No, that, that's fair. That's fair. No, just I mean, continuing on the on the question of the previous participant, like whether this is transient or not, uh, really, because you are highlight you're you're still sticking to our 1.75 to 1.85 percent credit cost guidance. So, just wanted to get a sense of what gives us the confidence of an improvement in the second half. So, Viran, if you notice the disclosure that we have done on stage level breakup of the overall balance sheet, you will see that the movement has taken place in stage two. And to the point that Raji was making that when uh, the delinquency go up a little bit, uh, whether on account of pounds going up or collection efficiency is going down, uh, it takes probably two quarters for it to normalize. Uh, in this case, the customers have migrated uh, to an extent because of uh, the lower collection efficiency in Q1 from stage one to stage two. Uh, we have reason to believe that we'll be able to control uh, the subsequent slippage into stage three. However, at this point in time, we'll assume that uh, that will happen in Q2. And after that, because incrementally, as Rajiv said, uh, in the month of June or July, as we are seeing the bounce rates should be, they are looking better than where used to be January to March. Uh, that gives us confidence saying that uh, from quarter three onward, we should have some improvement in the overall collection efficiency as well as on the loan loss number. Okay, okay, that answers it. Thank you so much and all the best. Our next question comes from Kunal Shah with Citigroup. Your line is open. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, hi. So, as you indicated, uh, maybe because of this, we are pruning down uh, a few of the segments, but uh, any, any revision with respect to the growth guidance which we had given earlier at 26 to 28 odd percent? Because maybe at the same point in time on credit costs also you have indicated that uh, yeah, there could be some marginal upward bias on that uh, metric as well. So anything in mind in terms of toning down of the growth uh, and the guidance out there? So Kunal, if we see uh, current quarter number, we have, we have seen a balance sheet growth of 31%, uh, 28,500 crores would be growth for the quarter. Uh, we are pulling down uh, uh, exposures wherever we deem uh, appropriate at this point in time based on the incoming data. However, that doesn't change the guidance for the year. Uh, we had said 26 and 28% with an upward bias towards 28. Uh, we continue to maintain the same guidance at this stage. Okay. So there is uh, uh, no no revision out there. There is no change. There is no change. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but okay. Now, as, as I said earlier, 
we are watching uh, uh, we are watching the same we are watching the default rates are we seeing july default rate lower than june and lower than march answer is yes uh, but uh, default rates were not a problem even in april may june it's a collection efficiency so we are watching and we are acting as well as from a prudent standpoint and uh, secondly on the fee income side uh, so can we say that uh, uh, we are closer to the normalization out there maybe post the uh, lifting of the restrictions or there is uh, uh, maybe still more to flow in wherein we could see the gained uh, contraction on the overall uh, uh, fee income uh, pirana uh, sorry kunal has said we could go live on emi card only on 10th of may so uh, and ecom went live only in june uh, middle of june that was first for between 1st and 15th of june so there was drag for at least 50 60 days uh, even in q1 so there is some level of residue that is sitting there which should flow through uh, we or we should come through as we move through the next three quarter okay okay and i not sure if you earlier highlighted in terms of this entire other income within the non trust side any any reason for uh, uh, the sharp rise out there yeah that the theory a kind of uh, one seasonality in the overall volume which also has uh, uh, relevance from a costal perspective uh, so that's one reason second is the restart of emi card uh, sourcing starting from 10th of may raji highlighted uh, that's the second reason third is uh, we also had a one time gain on account of a small right of portfolio sale that we did uh, that has also come through in the current quarter okay one time gain on right of and that would be a significant one that's about 45 crore rupees uh, for the quarter oh, okay okay yeah thank you thanks and all the best we now turn to antariksha banerji with icici prudential amc your line is open please go ahead uh yeah thanks i'm on the way right yes yes yeah so uh, so uh, uh, thanks for the explanation i just wanted to uh, clarify this point on credit cost and uh, you know collection efficiency what you are saying sir is the quarter the bounces or the volume uh, flows into the next buckets were not as large but basically the lgds went up uh, across segments when you mean collection efficiency it is the volume uh, it is the value is that right understand me so the number of customers who were bouncing earlier which means i present 100 installment 100 cases uh, on a monthly basis x number were bouncing if we see right. a rapid increase in bounce rate answer is no, no. however of the Got customers who were bouncing if we see uh, a little low recovery was low efficient in the that's correct so recovery is lower as a result customer has migrated from stage 1 to stage 2 where the pcr uh, versus say 80 basis point in stage 1 is roughly about 30 35 40% in case of stage 2 customers got it uh, and this related to this uh, you know we've been calling out some stress in rural b2c for some time uh, at the system level there are various noises around this entire topic are there markers that you can identify for these stress apart from this one quarter is it multiple loans for the customer who are you know more prone to these lower recoveries is there a specific type of exposure some region cohorts of age anything that you have identified in terms of marker yeah, so uh, based on the internal analysis that we have carried out using the bureau data uh, one i think uh, based on the action taken by rbi on risk weight assets uh, there seems to be i would say a stagnancy or a or a flat number that we see on a disbursement month after month uh starting i would say say november december 2023 site till june month uh, that's one second i think um, as we look at uh, the overall am growth uh, of the overall balance sheet that we are seeing for the industry also seemingly easing out a little bit and as the as the disbursements on a monthly basis stable remain stable for uh, uh, some more uh, one or two or three, three more quarter we'll also see the am growth rate slow down a bit for the industry that's that's one thing uh, however when we look at the overall customer profile in terms of set of customers who are having multiple loans uh, say before covid versus today have we seen a marginal increase answer is yes 
Uh, is it significant? Answer is no. Uh, the movement between uh, customers who did not have any loan of unsecured out of our active banking uh, was 50, uh, 63% in uh, March 20. Uh, that has come down to 50, which is 42% customers whom we bank on a monthly basis have some of the loan relationship in the market. Uh, set of customers, all of this had more than one loan. Uh, there is a 3% increase in the customers who have multiple loans at this stage. Sure, but that is not the uh, you know, real market. So has this number moved versus pre-COVID? The answer is yes, but is there a significant uh, movement? We at least in our portfolio that we see, we are banking right now uh, 21 million, yeah, 21 million customers. Unique customers yeah. 21 million unique customers. Uh, we were banking uh, 10 million unique customers in 2020. 63% uh, had secure loan. Now 58% don't have an insecure. So in five years, only 5% number has actually moved. And uh, But in that, in that to the point Sandeep is making, are we seeing movement on one unsecured and two unsecured and three unsecured? The answer is yes, but nothing, nothing to conclude that there is, um, um, that there's a problem. In fact, last data point, I think, uh, versus FI23 to FI24, we have in fact seen the number of customers who have uh, outstanding personal loan has actually come down uh, on in percentage term. So, as Rajiv said, 58% customers don't have a personal at this stage. Uh, the number was uh, 60% uh, in the, sorry, the number was 59, 57% uh, in the last year is 1% improvement in terms of number of customers who don't have uh, personal at this stage. So she's sure, sure. giving a third number, 63% did not have, now 58 don't have, when we look, got this data on 23, it was 57. Yeah. Got it, got it. Uh, okay, thanks. That's clear. Uh, just a small thing, Sajib, what is this policy on utilization of contingent provisions? Uh, is it formula-driven basis or something, or is it subjective? So we have created provisions predominantly for COVID situation. Uh, since we have come out complete, come out uh, from COVID uh, in entirety, uh, we have cleaned up the provision that that we were carrying as a management overlay uh, uh, for the same purpose. Uh, at this point in time, I think there is only a small amount of provision that remains in Bajaj Housing Finance Limited. As far as BFL is concerned, we don't carry any overlay at this stage. Whatever is the overlay that you see uh, now is purely because of macroeconomic consideration that needs to be baked in as part of the ECL model. Sure, got it. And just one small data point, is there any impact of uh, this RBI uh, you know, uh, uh, regulation on penal interest versus penal charges in our current code? No, we were never capitalizing penal, in, penal interest slash penal charges, so we didn't have any impact of the circular. Sure. Okay, thank you. That's it. We now turn to Deval Garda with DSP. Your line is open. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, just uh, uh, one question on growth. Uh, so, uh, I mean, uh, if you could just talk a little bit about the new products, uh, you know, how the uh, scale-up is uh, taking place. And uh, just uh, in that same context, uh, you know, medium term uh, may not be FI 25, 26, but just directionally the book uh, mix uh, as it progresses to your target level, how should one think about, uh, you know, sustainable credit cost, uh, uh, which I think last time you had explained that uh, should be about one seven based on the revised RBI guideline and uh, the right of policy change that you talked about earlier. So just any any comments around that would be useful. So, so uh, growth clearly, uh, we see we have double, we have Ladies and gentlemen, we've lost connection with our speaker. Thank you for your patience as we reconnect them.
sorry Raval. Uh, so Raval, as you have guided, uh, the uh, full year goes to be in the region of 26 to 28 uh, percent. That's point number one in terms of uh, uh, the outlook for the current year. And I would say, uh, you know, 2.2, 2.3x of 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 bank rate growth is really where you should pencil in the number. Uh, so we remain well anchored on long-term growth uh, guidance. Now coming to uh, long, I mean medium-term uh, loan losses and provision outlook. See pre-COVID the number was 192 basis points. Uh, the number uh, and since 172 basis of full year, yes. nine months was full year 172 basis points. Uh, uh, if you if you knock off one timers. Uh, since then, there have been changes to, from a regulatory standpoint, there will be changes. If you adjust that number, the 170 to 185. Uh, you should pencil in between 175 and 185 basis points from a uh, medium term standpoint. Understood. Thanks. Thanks, and all the best. We now turn to Abhishek Maraka with HSBC. Your line is open. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, hi everyone. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so, two questions. One, one on uh, this uh, rural B two C. You know, almost for four or five quarters we've been cautious. We've not been growing. So, what needs to turn? You know, for us to get a better uh, or rather more comfort to grow in this segment. So, what what are the uh, things you're looking out for? Um, the second question is regarding this product for customer slide. Uh, so how do we read this? So if I see there's a bit of a plateauing out of the product for customer at 6.1, 6.2, and your two-year-old, two-year month on board, I mean 24 month on board customers also close to 6.2. So are we more or less at a peak at 6.1, 6.2 in terms of cross sell? And does that mean that now you need to spend much more on? You know, uh, spending, uh, 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 selling the next product, or or increasing customer acquisition costs. So how how do we read this? Yeah. So hi, Anup here. Uh, on the rural B two C, as Rajiv clearly articulated, is last uh, one one and a half years we have been fine tuning in terms of risk cuts. But having said that, when we look at rural B two C, because these are all cross sell personal loan, our rural B two B growth has been very very robust. So that gives us mm -hmm. a significant latitude to actually offer the product to right customers. Uh, that is one. Second is uh, what we have been doing is, you know, one as, as you looked at the whole collection efficiency as a metric because uh, the affordability is the real call out when you go to rural and at a design level, uh, we are looking at pegging the loans at right uh, average ticket size. So I think more broader base of customers being offered the loan uh, with a lower EMI is where we are we are anchoring the rural and that's how we used to do it pre-COVID. Uh, but what happened during COVID and post-COVID, obviously, you know, what was left to us, better customers, and we thought they possibly can service a little better, higher EMI, and that does not seem to work as well in rural because rural is all about affordability and EMI and your ability to repay. So I think that's the larger part. Uh, having said that, the B2B growth of rural continue to remain robust, which gives us reasonable confidence that we will start uh, climbing that number up. I think that's about 10 12% this year and, and uh, forward from there. So I think that's the first point. On products per customer, we look at those metric and uh, the, that metric is a combination of our lending products, payment products, deposits, uh, and distribution product. Uh, the larger movement there has been because of the payment products, because as we move more digital, uh, we wanted consumers to use the payment products, and that's the large movement. Uh, when it comes to the lending product, that number is, I think, 2.6, 2.7, right? That's broadly how how that gets anchored. But the larger part of the PPC is payment products. And that uh, drives our digital engagement strategy. Lastly, I just want to add, yeah. um, uh, appreciate that when we look at the total franchise of 89 million, uh, if India dispenses monthly in our assessment 72 to 75,000 crores of personal loans a month, uh, this franchise dispense gets between between 36 to 40,000 crores a month. 
whereas our coverage of that is only 10%. So mm. so um, there is the PC metric quite honestly as Anup made the point uh, we track it but we track it only once in a quarter. I mean six hours per customer on a two year basis. It's an outcome rather than input. It's not a metric which is. It's a uh, it's it was a need from investors so we decided to populate it. Otherwise, businesses are organized vertically in the company. The uh, there is independence for respective units to uh, to to cross sell as they deem appropriate uh, is just the last point I would make. So franchise is the power of the franchise is not an issue at all. Uh, and Anup made an important point that more to, less to more rather than more to less. And what we did then was not wrong because in hindsight, COVID led two customers at the margin drop off. So the only thing that was left to do uh, that those who survived uh, or continue to perform well could be offered. So in hindsight, it looks okay, but at that point, it was the right thing to do. I would just make that point as well. No, fair, fair. So appreciate that. And uh, just uh, when does this readjustment, you know, come into the base? For rural B2C. No, we, so moving it's to it's underway. It's underway. To the point Anup is making, it's underway. You already, as I made earlier, Abhishek point that we are already. Uh, so we have not just done this in uh, rural. We have done this in urban as well. So as I made a point that we remain watchful on. So we have cut exposure uh, uh, on both sides of the line. So uh, uh, we have cut exposure and more to. Less to more, uh, we've done in both urban and in rural, you know. So it will further create greater granularity in this, in the process. And Got anyway, it. if I keep making the point, one of the points I keep making uh, is normalizing to pre-pandemic. <laughs> I think we like it or not, it's a, uh, uh, it's a, it's something that is that that ought to happen. I think that's my personal view. Sure, sure. No, thank you so much. Thanks and appreciate your answers. Thank you. We now turn to Avinash Singh with MK Global Financial Services. Your line is open. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. A couple of questions. I mean, the car uh, loan segment, if we see, of course, it's growing at a very strong pace. Uh, size is still moderate, but there has been a kind of a sequentially for the last three, four quarters. I mean, a strong growth, yet a, a very, very marginal increase in stays too there as well. Uh, now, here one would expect that typically the customer segment to be prime and also what is going on there? I mean, I am sort of admitting that there's a very small uh, number. Audible. Sorry, yeah, can so, you just well, repeat that? Yeah, I am talking of car loan segment. Uh, in yeah. car loan segment, if we see last four, five quarters, of course, it is small, it is going very fast, but there has been sort of a percentage, stage two percentage increase happening last three, four, five quarters. So what is the sort of a trend there? Because their customer segment typically will be urban and prime. So what is going on there? One. And on DHSL, I mean, do you think that, I mean, now with this developer finance and LRD also gaining size, will the growth differential between home loan and these uh, be sufficient enough for you to maintain a kind of a balanced yield or will the growth going forward will converge and that will put pressure on your overall yield? Thanks. Yeah, so Vidash, uh, uh, particularly on car loan financing, uh, it is mainly on account of launch of uh, new car financing that we did in uh, July 2023. Uh, and it is that business which is leading to significant growth in the overall auto loan uh, segment that you are witnessing at this point in time. Uh, so far, until July 2023, we still only focus on used car financing. Uh, from July 23 onward, we have uh, started focusing on new car financing as well. Uh, regarding mortgage, yeah, Atul Jain is here. Uh, I'll request uh, Atul to give comment on... He's making a point on, on he's uh, just on that previous point. You're talking about inching up of delinquencies, that's what you meant, or you meant growth? Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes, yes. So, yes, yes, it's an inching up of delinquencies for last three, four quarters. So, you know, just one point I, I do want to make is that if you look at the uh, uh, panel 56, now technically we're talking about 99.34% was current in September 23. I mean, you know, the, the baseline numbers for us are 
very very low i think that is one point i want to uh, anchor and it's a 98.8 percent current <laughs> so these and this includes mind you this is uh, 65 percent of the portfolio is used car portfolio okay and 35 percent of the portfolio is new car portfolio these mind you the threshold levels of delinquency are extremely low is this one point i want to uh, leave you with uh just a design level, right so uh so and you will see this number stabilize somewhere now uh, based on our internal models these numbers remain quite low so you will see them move up uh we'll probably you know many years ago we used to have a benchmark line we'll probably just reestablish the benchmark line so that as we launch new businesses uh um uh, uh the investors are well seized of what the benchmark line is so uh, i take that input uh, away from the conversation uh, atul yeah yeah so that is right i mean yeah yeah sorry sorry good yeah, the developer right right Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, on car loan, yeah, exactly. So, I mean, now, now you're eight thousand crore. At some point, the growth will start to moderate. So, where's that baseline? Where you, exactly? That is, of course, sort of point nine times. I mean, that okay. Of course, that is that okay. So, very, very low. I mean, point eight percent is still a very, very low delinquency in all sorts of things. But where the sort of uh, that your uh, line you see that okay, when eight eight thousand maybe doubles another, so it reaches fifteen or thousand crore. No, no, it's fair point. It's fair. Uh, we'll we'll publish next quarter onwards the bench the benchmark number. Okay, and yeah, on the VHL. Yeah. No, no. I mean, with the developer finance and LRD book now getting a significant in size, and probably going forward, the growth of home loan converging with these two. Do you see sort of a you know pressure on yields in the VHL segment, or will this segment will continue to outgrow the core home loan? So Avinash, uh, Atul here. <clears throat> so in BHFL, we have a regulatory construct of something called the principal business criteria, which is laid down by RBI. So the portfolio construct is largely uh, going to play within the la- large asset kind of a built or a portfolio mix we have. Plus minus two three percent is the margin uh, which will which can be there in the product construct. But sixty percent of the assets have to be housing assets, and out of that also fifty percent plus has to be individual home loan. Now LRD as a asset class, why? Is is not a ROE decretive. It is a ROE optimizer. As far as LR, because between LRD and the LAP, we play in between both assets at a point of a time. Uh, if I have to say, last one year or one and a half year, we have found LRD to be more risk adjusted, better returns because it's a versus LAP uh, versus loan against property. Because as a housing finance company, 60% has to be the home loan part, so that goes there. Uh, plus developer finance, which is required both from ROE enhancer and as well as It is tightly integral. It is very. It's an integral part of our home loan business because we get significant part of our home loan boost to the developer where we are funding. Now, between a rest part of the portfolio is between LAP and LRD. Depending upon our risk return view, uh, we take a stance on being heavy. We we right now continue to be heavy on LRD. And as a return, it is not return dilutive because it's a very low opex direct source business. And uh, uh, quite risk adjusted returns are good enough here. Uh, okay. Okay. Good. Thanks. We now turn to Sandhya Agarwal with Unicorn Assets. Your line is open. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Good evening, sir. First question is on the uh, lines of the previous participant as well, and. Um, on the vehicle finance car loans and uh, two wheeler loans so we see some kind of trend building up in both the vehicle finance and slowly the uh, collection efficiency and the credit costs are increasing so any view on particularly the vehicle finance division because they nearly constitute 25% of our uh, gross npas no that's not correct two wheeler three wheeler plus car finance okay no but they are two different genres uh, they are not comparable at all uh, um, the uh, they are completely different even in auto loan uh, suddenly i would say um, that as the actually to the previous question of avinash as the share of new car in this portfolio increases which 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 is also back so this portfolio will eventually we we publish only auto loans but internally the model is organized as 
55 45 55% used autos and 45% new autos that's point number 1 today it is uh, 70 70 30 so actually the the net net the stage 2 or the current portfolio in this will only go up actually which will improve okay as new auto uh, builds up but the problem with new auto is it's very hard to make money in. so that's why that's why back that 55 45 uh, i think just 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 to give you that texture related to avinash's question as well two wheeler is a completely different genre that that uh, um, that business is a good business it runs a r- different very different risk adjusted uh, rates of returns so as you can see even even when it is 11% stage 2 it is still a profitable business and at 5% stage 2 it still remains a profitable uh, uh, reasonably profitable business thank you and secondly on uh, on just a longer term guidance so as we see that like obviously we are growing our new customer base at around 15 to 20% and going forward we may see some slightly modest numbers like mid teens uh, new customer addition numbers in mid teen percentage so do we also look to uh, add a new uh, product line in terms of business segment like msmes or any other like government is also promoting too much on the msme part and the other side because maybe we are looking we can look for newer segments for faster growth no so we 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 principally have a reasonably large market share in business loans which is uh, which is a 7 16 year old business we have reasonable market share in that business that's to msmes the loan against property in last january that was started in bfl is also to msmes uh, so we are we we pretty well capture uh, the full msme space that one so i need the supply chain loan. financing and other products sorry the supply chain uh, we already do the supply chain financing to emerging local cor- emerging corporates but don't do it in msme because it's it doesn't it's not risk adjusted and just lastly on uh, the bfsl part so we uh, the uh, franchise is really growing faster and faster day by day so uh, what are what, what kind of uh things we are looking in terms of uh, technological spend in bfsl because i heard uh, that on uh, uh, election day the uh, application and website went down yes so as we as the profitability of the business starts to come through uh, we took a clear view that we first got to generate profitability before we make deep investments in in building out the retail broking and the uh, business so uh, the business as i said earlier in the opening remarks that should make between 150 to 160 crores of pat it should make uh, we are we've just hired a new cio we are now uh, rapidly accelerating the uh, at tech development infrastructure it, it it did go down to the point that you make is correct uh, uh, you will see significant movement in that space over the next 6 to 9 months time uh colleague of mine who who left us who was our chief operating officer uh, has moved on their board uh, as well to advise them uh, on uh, on on tech stack thank you thanks so much all the best that's all the time we have for our q and a i will now hand back to subramanian ayo with morgan stanley for closing remarks uh on behalf of morgan sandy i thank rajiv anup uh, sandeep patul and team for the time and insights uh, rajiv will you want to make any closing remarks no no i'm good sir thank you okay uh, okay so wish you all the uh, best and uh, thanks him uh, people wanting to ask questions or i can see on the uh at least i can see on the on the so and maybe and uh, if there are no questions we are fine i mean you know but uh yeah i think uh, uh we can possibly take one more question rajesh yes we can take a couple of questions yeah we can take a couple of questions thank you return our next question comes from urnag mantri with oxpo capital 
your line is open, please go ahead. Hey, hi, uh, thanks. Just uh, one question coming back, uh, you know, to the to the asset quality comments. Uh, basically, in the Google sorry, sorry, B2C, sorry, sorry, uh, sorry, asset quality. Yeah, yeah, yeah sorry, Anurag. Yeah. Yeah, no. I, what I was just asking that, uh, you know, are there uh, many uh, any like correlations or anything to read into uh, the trends in B two C and uh, maybe uh, the trends in MFI as well? Because that's another segment where you know the industry uh, has already seen higher delinquencies. So, I mean, if you can highlight if there's any overlap uh, to think about, that would be useful. Um, and secondly, overlap on uh, the collections part. Wait, 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 I'm sorry, on, on the collections, uh, just want to understand if it has any implications for uh, the way we're thinking about the OPEX growth uh, for this year, given that we we'll probably be uh, you know, looking to spend more on collections potentially. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, the overlap with MFI is very, very little. So, that's point number one. Uh, point number two, uh, we should continue to see OPEX to name uh, gravitate downwards. Despite the despite the uh, augmenting the debt, debt management infrastructure work that you do. Hello. Sorry. Thank you very much. Yeah. We now turn to Bavrik Dave with Nippon India Mutual Fund. Your line is open. Please go ahead. Yeah, I uh, hope I'm audible. Just one question, sir. Uh, if you could just talk about the competitive intensity in the urban B2B and B2C uh, segments, uh, because we've, in the last one year we've been talking about competitive intensity being quite high in terms of personal loans, wherein a lot of large banks uh, and even PSU have got quite aggressive. Uh, how, how are things in there in terms of both uh, the aggression in terms of pricing and uh, the push towards this product, uh, both on the B2B and B2C side? Thank you. Uh, so one, uh, Bhavi, very clearly on the B2B business, uh, we continue to maintain the market share. Uh, the market share has remained range bound, I would say, for the last four quarters consecutively. We had seen some loss of market share during uh, April to December 2022. Ever since then, we have made significant investments in terms of fee capacity. And subsequent to that, we have seen holding a market share at the level where it used to be. Uh, Pre-COVID, in fact, it's not just about uh, offline market. Even as we have restarted our e-commerce financing business, uh, post little embargo, we have seen uh, reasonable, uh, I would say, coming back of customers uh, wanting to take e-commerce loans through EMI card uh, in the current quarter. Uh, more particularly in the second half of uh, June, uh, on the restart of uh, e-commerce business. Sure. In terms of PL, any thoughts in terms of yields? Quite competitive. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, I was trying to understand, sir. We mentioned that uh, the large banks have got really aggressive in terms of uh, personal loans in urban, wherein the ticket sizes were going up, the rates were not being uh, commensurate. Is, has, has have things changed there, considering the uh, uh, RBI directive in terms of uh, slowing down in terms of unsecured? Have things changed there, or uh, things are still highly competitive? Uh, I agree. Uh, see, at the aggregate level, we do see some moderation of unsecured loans. Uh, however, uh, as 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 we see the data, the largest uh, uh, lenders there are the public sector banks. So, I think that number is possibly 35 to 40 percent of the total lending is happening on unsecured is uh, the public sector. Uh, and of course, the fintech numbers are very very small in terms of value, those are most count. We do see moderation there. So uh, overall, uh, our market share remains where it is. In fact, we have lost little market share there. It is around, used to be 7%, our market share will be 30 weeks lower. By and large, we are maintaining. Uh, but we have, we have run this business by and large at a similar growth rate. We have not changed our trajectory there. Right. That's helpful. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our Q&A and today's conference call. We'd like to thank for your participation. You may now disconnect your lines.